Okay, so many individuals don't believe that God exists because there are there's so much wickedness going on in the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. And so if you were to encounter somebody who believes this, how would you begin to minister to them or try to basically um, share the gospel with them? You yeah, know? yeah. One of the beautiful things about Jesus is he said, I'm telling you these things now so you know who I am. You know that I'm God. You know that you, you know that I know I'm talking about. Um, but he did say that the wickedness of this world will increase. Um, and even when you look at the world, technically speaking, they're preaching the gospel just in another way. They're proving God right. God said we're all sinful. God said we're wicked. God said no one is good. No, not one. And the challenge with the question, or if I was talking to someone, and I could use this as a training moment for you too, most people's issue, they don't realize it is with free will, not God. If God was to remove free will from us, it would be manipulation. Um, this would be a very weird time on earth because we would all just be doing what God just wants us to do. And in fact, that alone is against his nature because God is love. If God was to manipulate us, then it would no longer be love. And for or, in order for him to be true to his nature, he has to love, which means he has to give us free will, the ability to choose. Because what lo what is love when you can't choose to love? What is our relationship with him if we can't choose to be in a relationship with him? What is life without the ability of choice? And so there's dangers with choice. When a father sees his young kid you know, without a license, he's young, he's passionate, reckless. And he's like, Dad, I want a car. Get me a car. The father understands that if he drives that car, he's going to cause a lot of damage to people and to himself. Right now, in that father's form of protection, he can withhold those keys. Now, God within life. Again, he can't remove free will from us, but the danger or the, the thing that breaks his heart is the realities of what happens when you allow some people to choose. Some people are going to use their choice to do some crazy stuff. Some people are going to use their choice to chase power, money, greed, their own envy, their own motives. It's, it's almost like unlimited what you may see if you give somebody the opportunity to choose. The good news is that although there is choice, there's also judgment. And so with a great God who is love that gives us the ability to choose, he's also a just God that is also a great judge. And so there will be a day where people will be repaid for their choices. God said if it was up to him, he wouldn't have anybody perish. But people choose to. There's going to come a day when heaven and hell becomes a reality for everyone. But anyone who is sent to hell is not just going to break God's heart, but they'll know on that day that it was their choice. And so when it comes to ministering to people like that, I would let them know first and foremost, their burden with the wickedness of the world is them actually experiencing or sharing in God's heartbeat. That's really not their burden. It's actually God's. And God allows us to have that. It's actually smeared on our hearts, right and wrong, good and evil the laws of God, who created reality, uh, morality. No one could be in charge of de deciding what's good and bad because we're all bad. If you don't think so, I always ask people, if you were to take my thoughts and put it on a big screen behind me and it played for all y'all just today, I would say, okay, turn it off. <laughs> because you can't see what I'd be thinking about. But just because I think it don't mean I'm gonna act on it, but all of us, yeah. just inherently we're bad, but we just choose a different way. And so, God is saying, choose a different way, which is him. Um, and unfortunately, again, I would talk to those people and let them know what you feel, what you're experiencing. That's what God feels. And there's a reason why you're burdened by some of the things you see. Now, how can you use that and not misinterpret that burden for there to be no wickedness but peace? Don't, don't look at God. But say, okay, how can I be an answer to some of these problems? Even when it gets discouraging. Even when you feel like, well, what really can I really do? You can love your neighbor. You can start there. Some people have bigger platforms, and that's great for them. 
But the reality is most of our burdens is with free will. And when we ask questions like that, like, oh my God, why is there so much wickedness? We don't realize, but what we're really saying is, why did God allow us to choose? But he had to, he's love. Um, and so one thing I would say to the, those people, you know, channel that energy, channel that frustration, channel those burdens um, to not be angry at God. Understand that God has literally told us this. This is, this is what his whole deal is. Um, and he wants people to get saved, people to get delivered. Um, but it's very sad what's going on in the world. And the reality is, <sighs> not even going to go in that direction because that could be discouraging. Um, the wickedness of the world will increase. And so the challenge for all of us is to say, as for me and my house, though, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will do what God is calling us to do. As for me and my house, we will love people. We will treat people equally. We will, we will do whatever, whatever that looks like that is holy, that is righteous, that is good, that is pure, that is inspiring. You know what I'm saying? The goal is to see the wickedness of the world and decide you're not going to repeat the same thing. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you inspire people on the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so while you're speaking, you did mention that people choose to go to hell. So could you further explain that? No, because I don't want anybody to misinterpret that. Like, how do I choose to go to hell? Okay. You know? So like, I want that to be as clear as possible so that people won't like misinterpret that in any way yeah. on how they choose to go to hell. Yeah. First and foremost, my name is Alvin Air C. Eugene Jr. Um, I want to first say thank you for always taking time out to watch these videos. I pray they've been a blessing to you. I pray they've been a source of inspiration for you. I have some interesting news um, and it is a tool that I'm going to be able to utilize to stay in contact with you. There's a lot of things going on in my world and I'm trying to really see how can I stay connected and stay keeping you updated on letting you know some exclusive things that's coming, some interesting projects that's coming and just be able to communicate with you on a more personal level. So I want to introduce you to this way that we can keep in contact where you can send me messages, I can send you messages. Um, and we can even do some fun things together and work together and co-labor together to really expand and extend the message that God has given me to share with the world. Um, so I appreciate all of your love and support. All I need you to do is literally just text this number right there. Text that number, reach out to me. I'm going to send you a message as soon as I get your message and we will work together from there. I will keep in contact with you from there and we're going to enjoy really just an amazing uh, I would say next phase of what I'm able to do um, on this online platform. So I appreciate you again. Um, a lot of you have been truly a blessing to me. Um, I thank you for your support, your words of encouragement, your sowing, your giving, and I just can't wait to continue this journey with you. And I can't wait to keep you updated on what's to come. So God bless you. I appreciate you. I love you. And go spend time with God. I know he wants to talk to you.